Welcome back for another deep dive. And um, today we're diving into something that you all specifically requested. We're going to be looking at the connection between autism and chronic pain. Oh, wow. So, you know, you're probably already familiar with the social and behavioral aspects of autism. But you know what's okay. interesting is this recent blog post that I read on Cheap ADA called Autism and Chronic Pain, The Unseen Struggle. Yeah. It reveals that chronic pain is actually way more prevalent in autistic individuals yeah, yeah. than most people realize. It's true. You know, I think we often really focus on those communication and social interaction challenges. But, you know, the thing is, those sensory and neurological differences that are very much associated with autism right. can actually have a huge impact on someone's physical experience, too. OK, so let's get into this a little bit. So the blog post kind of starts out with a statistic that is kind of startling. Yeah. Right. It says that 70 percent of autistic adults report experiencing chronic pain. Wow. And then they compare that to just 30% of the general population. So that's more than double. It's a big difference. Yeah, like what what gives? Why is there such a difference? So there are, you know, a few key reasons and they're all interconnected. One of the main things is the way autistic individuals actually process sensory input. A lot of them experience hypersensitivity, okay. which basically means their senses are heightened. So imagine something like you know, a tag on a shirt or even the hum of a fluorescent light. Yeah. Those everyday sensations that you and I probably don't even register can be like super intensely irritating. Oh, yeah. Or even just downright painful. Yeah. For someone on the spectrum. It makes total sense. It's like their sensory volume knob is like way up. Yes, exactly. And it's not even just, you know, those external things. Right? Yeah, you're right. It's internal sensations too. things like, you know, digestive discomfort or muscle tension. Right. Can also feel amplified for them. And then you add in the neurological aspect. Research is starting to reveal that there are differences in the brain and yeah. the structure and function. And it seems like these impact how pain signals are processed and regulated in autistic individuals. So it's not just that they're feeling things more intensely, but their brains might be interpreting and responding to those sensations like differently as well. Exactly. And then, you know, to add another layer of complexity there, autistic individuals are also more prone to things like anxiety, right. yeah. depression, and even gastrointestinal disorders. Mm -hmm. And each of these can contribute to pain on its own. So you're getting this kind of perfect storm situation. Wow. So we're really talking about this complex web of sensory, neurological, and psychological factors all kind of playing a role here. Yeah. To make it a little bit more human, the blog post shares a couple of different personal stories. So one is about Sarah, who has fibromyalgia. Right. <laughs> um, and I think Sarah's experience kind of highlights how varied the sources of chronic pain can be. So you know, fibromyalgia is characterized by this widespread musculoskeletal pain, fatigue, a right. whole bunch of other symptoms like sleep problems and mood swings. Yeah, it's tough. Now, imagine experiencing all of that on top of already heightened sensory sensitivities mm -hmm. and those potential neurological differences in pain processing. Right. It's a Ooh, lot. That we've been talking about, yeah. It's a lot to handle. It's a powerful example. And then there's John, who suffers from migraines. Ah, uh, yes. And John's case, I think, emphasizes that chronic pain doesn't always have to be constant right it can be episodic you know flaring up unexpectedly and completely disrupting your day yeah. um, and just trying to navigate social situations oh, yeah. or even just sensory rich environments while dealing with a debilitating migraine right is very challenging it is these stories really make it real right like it's not just this abstract concept no. it's like an actual lived reality for so many people yeah Definitely. But so we've established, you know, this is a serious issue, but what, what can be done about it? Well, thankfully, this blog post doesn't just leave us hanging with the problem. Oh, good. It does actually outline several practical management strategies. Okay. That can be helpful, but it's always important to remember to work with healthcare professionals right. to create a plan tailored to you. Okay. So let's dive into these strategies. First up, medication. Yeah. I know some people are a little hesitant about medication, but it can be an important part yeah. of pain management in certain cases, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's important to remember that medication should never be seen as a quick fix. Right. It's just one tool in the toolbox. And the key is finding the right balance between managing the pain effectively right. and minimizing any potential side effects. That makes sense. What about physical therapy? Because I have to admit, when I think of physical therapy, I'm thinking about those intense workout routines. Right. Which doesn't sound very appealing for somebody who's already in pain. Yeah. You know what? That's a common misconception. Nope. When it comes to chronic pain management, 
Physical therapy is actually about those gentle exercises and stretches okay. that are designed to improve flexibility, range of motion, and muscle strength. Hmm. So it's really more about re-educating the body yeah. and finding ways to move that actually feel good. Exactly. And you know what? It can be surprisingly effective yeah. in reducing pain levels over time. That's really encouraging to hear. What about mindfulness techniques? So the blog post mentioned a few things like deep breathing meditation and yoga. Yeah, those are great. And I've always heard about those for stress reduction, mm -hmm. but how do they tie into pain management? You know, it all comes back to that mind-body connection. Okay. Mindfulness practices can actually help regulate the nervous system, which in turn reduces your stress and anxiety. Right. And when we can calm the nervous system down, it actually can change the way we perceive and experience pain. Now, it's not about ignoring the pain, but it's <laughs> about learning to approach it with more awareness and acceptance. That's fascinating. And the great thing is anyone can benefit from that. Exactly. Whether they're autistic or not. You're right. They're valuable tools for everyone. Okay, so we've got medication, physical therapy, and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. What's the last one they talk about? So the final piece is all about lifestyle. Okay. It might seem pretty obvious, but things like getting enough sleep, right? eating a healthy diet, and incorporating regular gentle exercise yeah. can have a huge impact on chronic pain. Those are things we hear about all the time. We do. But it's easy to forget how important they really are. You're so right. It's not always about finding a magical cure, but it's about making sustainable changes yeah. that support your overall well-being. Yeah. And these lifestyle adjustments can really help regulate your mood, improve sleep quality, reduce inflammation, yeah. all of which can contribute to reducing pain levels. It's about empowering individuals to take an active role in managing their pain. Oh, it was a holistic approach that mm. really addresses the mind and body. Exactly. It's about making those lifestyle changes to create a supportive foundation for overall well-being. That makes a lot of sense. So this is all really helpful information, but like, what does it mean for you, the listener? Well, if you're autistic or if you know someone who is chronic pain, might be something that you're already dealing with or something to be aware of. Yeah. It's often an invisible struggle, which can make it even harder to manage. Right. And that can lead to misunderstandings and judgments, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. People might assume someone is being lazy or dramatic when in reality they're battling debilitating pain right. that others just can't see. Yeah. So understanding is key, right? It is. Understanding that chronic pain is more common in autistic individuals, understanding those complex factors involved, right. and understanding those invisible struggles yeah. that many face. And with that understanding comes the potential for better support, more effective management strategies, mm -hmm. and a greater sense of empathy and compassion. It's so important to remember that pain is subjective. You know, right. what might be a minor ache for one person could be completely debilitating for someone else. And when that pain is invisible, it's even harder oh. for others to grasp the impact it's having. You're so right. Chronic pain can really touch every aspect of a person's life. Oh, yeah. You know, it affects energy levels, mood, the ability to engage with others, even simple things like concentrating or sleeping. Right. And because we can't see chronic pain, it's really easy for, you know, those around the individual yeah. to make judgments or assumptions about their behavior. Exactly. Someone might think the person is being lazy or antisocial or overly sensitive when the reality is yeah. they're just simply trying to cope with a level of pain that most people can't even imagine. That must be incredibly frustrating and isolating. It is. For the person experiencing the pain. Absolutely. And that isolation can lead to even more challenges like anxiety and depression. Oh, gosh, yeah. Which can then feed back into the pain cycle. Right. Like a vicious circle. It is a vicious circle. So what can we do to break that cycle? I mean, aside from the management strategies, we talked about what else can help. Well, a huge part of it is just simply raising awareness. Okay. The more we understand about the prevalence of chronic pain in autistic individuals, the more likely we are to approach those around us with empathy and compassion. It makes sense. Yeah. Knowledge really is power in this case. It is. When we understand that someone's behavior might be influenced by chronic pain. Right we're less likely to jump to conclusions uh, or make judgments. Instead of judging, we can ask questions, offer support, and create a more understanding and accommodating environment. The blog post actually ends with a call to action okay. to share experiences and create a more supportive community. Oh, wow. And that really resonated with me because it highlights the power of connection. Yeah. When people feel safe to share their struggles right. without fear of judgment, mm -hmm. they can find support and validation from others 
who truly understand what they're going through. I couldn't agree more. Building that sense of community can make a world of difference yeah. for someone who's struggling with chronic pain, knowing they're not alone. Yeah. That others have walked this path and found ways to cope yeah. can be incredibly empowering. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. I feel like I've learned so much about a topic that I honestly didn't know that much about before. Me too. But before we wrap things up, is there a key takeaway you want to leave our listener with? What's the one thing you really want them to remember from this conversation? I think the most important message is this. If you're an autistic individual struggling with chronic pain, you are not alone. Yeah. This is more common than you might think, and there are resources and support available. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. You don't have to suffer in silence. That's such an important point. And for those who aren't autistic but know someone who is, remember that chronic pain can be an invisible struggle. Yes, it can. Be patient, be understanding, and be willing to listen without judgment. Right. Sometimes just knowing someone cares and is willing to listen yeah. can make a world of difference. It's about cultivating a sense of empathy and compassion. Absolutely. Now, before we go, I want to leave our listener with one final thought to ponder. Okay. So we've talked about how chronic pain impacts an individual's daily life, their social interactions, right. their overall well-being. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, how might chronic pain impact the way autistic individuals are perceived. That's interesting. And supported by others. That's such an important question. You know, if someone is masking their pain, trying to fit in, yeah. trying to meet societal expectations, mm. how might that be misinterpreted? Right. Could it lead to people assuming they're being difficult? Right. Or attention seeking or just not trying hard enough? When in reality, they're fighting an internal battle yeah. that no one else can see. Exactly. And that misinterpretation can have serious consequences. Yeah. It can lead to a lack of support, feelings of isolation, and oh, no. a sense of being profoundly misunderstood. And it can create barriers <laughs> to accessing the care. You're right. And accommodations they need yes. to manage their pain effectively. You're absolutely right. This is why awareness is so crucial. Yeah. We need to move beyond stereotypes and assumptions. Right. And recognize that everyone experiences pain differently. Yeah. What might be a minor inconvenience for one person could be a major hurdle for someone else. So, dear listener, as you go about your day, we encourage you to consider those invisible struggles that others might be facing. Yeah. Be kind. Be compassionate and be an advocate for understanding and support. Right. Because sometimes a little bit of empathy can go a long way. Yeah. It's like we're looking at an iceberg. You know, we only see the tip. Right. Like the visible behaviors. Yeah. But there's a whole world of experience beneath the surface that we might be totally missing. Such a powerful analogy. Right. Yeah. And it speaks to the importance of not making assumptions about people's internal experiences right. yeah. just based on their outward behavior. Exactly. So before we wrap up this deep dive, I want to circle back to the cheap ABA blog post for a second. It really emphasizes you know, the need for a multifaceted approach right. to managing chronic pain in autistic individuals. Mm -hmm. And it kind of drives home the point that there's no one size fits all solution. Absolutely. What works for one person might not work for another. And it often takes a combination of approaches to actually find what provides mm -hmm. relief. Right. And it's not just about, you know, physical intervention, right. things like support groups, therapy, mm -hmm. and simply having understanding and compassionate people in their lives yeah. can make a huge difference for individuals, you know, navigating this challenge. It's about addressing the whole person. It is. Right. right. Their physical, emotional, social well being. Yeah. And speaking of support, the blog post also mentioned a couple of resources that I thought could be really valuable. Okay. So they highlight the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, or ASN. Yes. Which is a great organization that advocates for the rights and inclusion of autistic individuals. They also mention the Pain Connection, which offers support groups and resources specifically for people living with chronic pain. Yeah, those are great resources. Yeah, so those sound like fantastic resources for anyone looking to learn more or connect with others who understand their experiences. Right. So, dear listener... If you're grappling with chronic pain, mm -hmm. please know that you're not alone. Right. There are people who care. Yeah. And there are resources available to help you find relief and support. And remember, the journey to managing chronic pain can be long and winding. Right. But every step towards understanding self-care and seeking support 
is a step in the right direction. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. It has. And I hope it's been equally insightful for you, dear listener. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the often unseen connection between autism and chronic pain. Yes, thank you. Until next time, keep learning, keep asking questions, and keep advocating for a world that's more understanding and inclusive for everyone.